Yeah, what's going on, guys? Robbie Rowan here from the RobbieRowShow.com. Taking a look here, Garrett Cole on the left, Jacob DeGrom on the right, obviously two absolute studs, uh, but both guys have something in common, right? So watching them uh, from the television, you can see that they produce a ton of power output, but they also do it very effortlessly. So we're going to take a look here at some of the things and the key contributors uh, to their pitching mechanics that allow them to do this. So um, we got them kind of in a similar position here. We're going to take them both into their leg lift. So right off the bat, we're going to notice a commonality of leg lift and hand timing, right? So I talk a lot about timing and rhythm um, promotes consistency, right? So as they lift their leg, they're going to both have uh, a very subtle move um, into their leg lift with rhythm in their hands. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice Cole, who's going to stand a little bit more upright, whereas DeGrom, let's draw, he's going to increase his momentum going forward, right? So I have a lot of stuff on forward momentum and the acceleration rate into the drive phase. So DeGrom does this obviously extremely well. And, uh, you know, Garrett Cole is going to be a little bit different, but accomplish essentially the same thing. Now, we're also going to notice that stable foot position, okay? So something in terms of power output is making sure that we have the required stability throughout our body to maximize our power output. So both of these guys in their, in their leg lift, they don't showcase any compensations with their foot, right? You see a lot of young guys who potentially, you know, have some ankle instability, foot strength issues that right off the bat as they lift their leg, they're going to be wobbly. Um, you know, they're going to have some shifts in their foot, which is going to force the body to compensate. So then as we take them into their max leg lift, we see Cole here starting to accelerate. Okay. So notice how his head stays quiet. He's going to descend and enter his drive phase. I know this angle isn't quite great at looking at his posture, but notice how he doesn't defy gravity. What I mean by this is he doesn't have any weight or not weight, but momentum going backwards. Okay. He's accepting gravity and he's going to maximize the slope to accelerate his body. Okay. Now, as he does this, we're obviously taking a look at his ability to stabilize his force production from his max leg lift into his glutes. Okay, so with DeGrom, we're gonna notice the same thing. Okay, so forward momentum, head stays quiet. Now as he enters his drive phase, minimal compensations, good stability, and now he's gonna showcase the same thing. Okay, so both have the ability showcase the authentic stability to stabilize that force transfer. So when you reach peak leg lift and you're descending, you're going to have a lot of energy to be able to stabilize coming down, right? So this is why it's important to stabilize in our glutes, which is the most important muscle, uh, not important, but biggest muscle in our body. Okay. So we're also going to notice how Cole and DeGrom both keep this foot posture relatively closed, okay? So this is gonna give them the ability to stay closed with those hips and build up elastic rotational energy or torque, if you will. So now we drive. Now notice with Cole here is a kinetic timing sequence, right? So efficient kinetic timing. So now with this back hip, okay, and this back knee and the timing of which his arm is gonna go into arm raise. So we're seeing internal rotation now occurring at the time that the hand's coming up, the arm's going into scap retraction. We're gonna see the DeGrom accomplish this same move. His is gonna be a little bit delayed. He's a little longer levered guy, but you see it right there. Okay, so let's Clear this and give you a better visual of both. Boom, 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 right? 
So this timing is obviously extremely efficient, but we're noticing now that there's a ton of hip movement capacity. I talk a lot about movement capacity and movement potential. Okay, so the ability to maximize that movement. Okay, so we're seeing that there's no deficiencies from a movement standpoint because the lead leg is not necessarily pulling the rear hip into internal rotation. It's a byproduct of just authentically moving through time and space and stabilizing, okay? So now internal rotation, hand comes up, foot rotates into front foot strike, okay? Foot rotates into front foot strike, all right? The Grom's gonna have a, a, obviously a little uh, longer stride than, than Cole, but both accomplish that same move. We want to rotate into front foot strike rather than rotation then front foot strike. So then that's usually a byproduct of someone that lacks the hip movement capacity. So they get to their end range that they're able to own, and then it's more of a fall. So right off the bat, you see uh, from both of these guys the ability to control the center mass of their body. That's a really good indication of, of just efficient head posture, staying in the center, maximizing that internal rotation and energy going linear, right? We want energy going linear towards our target. Anything that's not going towards our target is wasted energy. So then, to put it simply, both get put into a really good position uh, at front foot strike because they were able to delay that arm raise, which delayed that trunk rotation. So we're gonna see the hips already going through before they touch down. So this creates that authentic amount of separation, that hip shoulder separation we always hear, right? So they are able to create authentic separation from the ability to delay trunk rotation and have hip internal rotation occur through the use of efficient movement capacity. Now we see as the arm comes through, both pull the arm through, not push, Glove side holds direction, and we see late launch, right? We see late launch trunk, okay? So the, the chest over the lead knee, and what I said, I know you can't see the grom there, but glove side still holding direction, okay? The, uh, another big hitter that I didn't really even hit on because you can't really see the grom over there, but the lead leg efficiently bracing impact. Right? We have to have the stability in the lead leg to brace that impact. A lot of youth athletes will leak a lot of velocity because they don't have the required stability in that lead leg. So then at front foot strike, as the energy transfer starts to occur from the back to the front, you see this lead leg not be able to brace. So then we get into this pattern of uh, you know, a leakage of energy. All right. Well, I know that's a lot, but that's good stuff. Um, my iPad's like frozen right now. <laughs> there it is. Okay. All right, guys. Um, that was how both of these dudes move extremely well and showcase extremely high power output and do it in a manner of effortless. All right. Well, I'm going to sign this now because I can. Cool. All right, guys. If you uh, want pitching mechanics coaching, let me optimize your delivery by signing up for a mechanical analysis. Be sure to head to the website, therobbyroshow.com, and go to online services to obviously learn more. Love to help you guys out. Talk to you next time. See you.